raise hand the people who have brains. Yeah, and few people didn't raise the hands. So, so that is a problem that we believe that we exist without brain. Okay, so brain, brain is one of the complex organ in our body and it is one of the complex creation on earth. Unfortunately, the problem is many don't believe that they are having problems uh, because of the brain disorder. And uh, there are a lot of myths about brain disorder that it is not treatable, but it ha occurs in elderly and it is very rare. But with the recent advances in technology and medicine, majority of uh, neurological disorders can be treated. Unfortunately, the main stroke is one of the leading uh, uh, most common disorder of neurology. One in six people will have stroke in their lifetime. That is, uh, that is how serious it is. And it is uh, second leading cause of death and uh, leading cause for disability. It is one in five in women and it is even more common in young. So it is important that all of you should know about stroke and uh, there is a treatment available and it can be prevented also. It is a disheartening fact that uh, the incidence of stroke is more common in India compared to the West. And majority of patients and the caregivers don't even relate the stroke to the brain, so they don't get the right treatment at the right time. Stroke is paralysis, which uh, most commonly manifests as weakness on one side of the body. It is also called Parshuvayu or Lakwa. So basically there are two types. One is ischemic stroke where there is a blockage of blood flow to the brain. And the second one is the bleeding inside the brain, which is brain hemorrhage or hemorrhagic stroke. So I'll be describing both of them and uh, to know what are the risk factors, how we, we can treat and what has happened recently. So the various risk factors about stroke is uh, hypertension, diabetes, high cholesterol, smoking, alcohol, obesity, sedentary lifestyle, and cardiac conditions. So majority of risk factors, these factors, if we control, then we can reduce the chance of stroke. So majority of you know that these are the risk factors that we need to follow healthy habits. We should not take junk foods. We should take fruits and vegetables, and we should do exercise. Majority of us know, but we'll still we don't follow. Now, I think in recent one year, I have seen 200 stroke in young, which is alarming. It is important because if you don't recognize these symptoms, majority will be disabled for life. The brain has different functions. So different part of the brain has different functions. So the symptoms depends on which part of the brain the damage happens. So it can be confusion, double vision, severe headache, vomiting, weakness on one side of the body, or altered sensory. The commonest symptom which we can remember can be remembered by mnemonic FAST, where F stands for facial asymmetry, A stands for arm weakness, S for speech disturbance, T is time. Time is important because every, every second counts in, in brain. So what happens in ischemic stroke is, when the blood flow to that part of the brain is blocked, the neurons in that area, which is supplied by that blood, uh, blood vessel, will start dying over time. So afterwards, the, we can't regenerate or we can't transplant that part of the brain. The other part of the brain will take over the function. How the, that's how the patient improve. So it all depends on how, how much percentage of the brain is damaged. If it is less, the recovery will be faster. If it is large, so they won't, be, they won't recover and they may die. So every second, we lose around 32,000 neurons. So every second counts if a person is having a stroke. So before 1970s, we were not able to differentiate whether it is a ischemic stroke or a hemorrhagic stroke. Our professor used to tell that if a patient with suspected stroke used to come to them, they used to remove fluid from back. If blood comes along with the fluid, then it was supposed to be hemorrhagic stroke. Otherwise, it was ischemic stroke. And patient was put on medicines and sent home. Majority will be disabled. In 1927, Professor Ijaz Moniz, he is a Portuguese neurologist, who invented cerebral angiogram. Cerebral angiogram is we inject dye into the artery and take photos. So initially, it was a few of the neurological disorders were diagnosed by this. Then, uh, then came the CT scan uh, invented by an engineer, Hansfeld. After the CT scan, we are able to differentiate 
ischemic stroke and hemorrhagic stroke. Uh, then we can treat su subsequently. Then came MRI by Damadian. He is a physician in America. With MRI, we are able to clearly see the brain and spine, and we are able to diagnose various neurological disorder. But uh, 20 years back, the landmark treatment which was available for stroke is clot buster injection, which is TPA. <coughs> TPA, if we give within 4.5 hours, majority of patients will, which has a small clot, will lies and they can improve significantly and they can go back home and they can go and join the work also. But unfortunately, in India, even though it is available since 20 years, less than 1% are receiving thrombolysis. The sad part is majority, majority of the doctors and the people don't know that this treatment is available. Then various endovascular techniques were developed. In endovascular treatment, we put a small tube from the leg artery and then go all the way into the brain and then we do the procedures. So these are all pinhole procedures. We can repeat if required. So what we tried many things. We used aspiration, removal clot, everything. But the latest what we are using is stent retriever. Stent retriever, actually, it, it was designed for androsum coiling, where we need to put a stent and coil. Accidentally, one of the doctor used it to remove the clot out. And after that, there was a significant change in the treatment of stroke which has happened from 2015. We take the microcatheter across. And then we put the stent inside that across the clot. So it is important that once a patient reaches to our hospital, it is important that we need to organize our workflow. Everything should be faster because every second counts. So even we need to do diagnose it early, we need to do scan early, we need to take the patient early to the cath lab and to the puncture. So everything should be fast. So once we deploy the stent inside, there is reperfusion of blood flow to that area, and the remaining area which is not yet damaged will survive. So that's how the recovery happens. And same stent we use to re remove the clot out. So earlier this, if a patient with large vessel occlusion uh, develops if when there was no treatment available, there will be disability for life. Whereas with this treatment, you know what happens. Once we remove the clot, some of the patient will raise their hand and legs on table. So that is a miracle which is possible nowadays. And majority of patients will improve over three months time. So this is how it will be removed. Coming to hemorrhagic stroke, so brain hemorrhage is a serious condition. So the most common cause for brain hemorrhage is hypertension. So even hypertension ing is more common. So annual checkup is required. You need to control your blood pressure. If it is controlled, majority of hemorrhagic stroke can be stopped. Even hypertension is one of the major risk factor for ischemic stroke. So one of the disorder which can cause brain hemorrhage is aneurysm. Aneurysm is uh, earlier, the only option available was surgical. Now, various endovascular techniques have come where we can treat aneurysms. Aneurysms are balloon-like swelling of the arteries. So they can burst because it is weak. So uh, earlier, they used to open the skull and do surgery. Now, with endovascular technique, we enter the brain from the leg artery, and we put a small catheter inside, and then we put platinum coils. So this will, clot will form inside the aneurysm so that the chances of it rupturing will be lessened. So if the aneurysm, this is the neck, if it is wide, then if you put coils, the coils can occlude the artery, so and producing stroke. So in those patients, we put the stent across the aneurysm. And through the struts of the stent, we enter the aneurysm with a microcatheter. And then we do the coiling. Okay, those, so the coils will stay inside the aneurysm. So blood will be flowing across the stent. So these are all in uh, techniques which, but the latest technique is why aneurysm develops is 
that artery is weak, so it bulges because of the pressure. So now, in some cases, we don't put the coils inside the aneurysm. We put a mesh type thing across the neck of the aneurysm. So now majority of blood before we put this mesh was going inside the aneurysm, causing it to bulge and it can expand and burst. Now we are putting this mesh across the neck so that majority of blood will flow through this mesh. Less blood will go inside the aneurysm. Slowly clot will form inside the aneurysm and it will shrink. Okay, now more blood will go across, less blood will go through the struts into the aneurysm and over six months to one year time, the aneurysm will shrink. So here we are not putting any coils inside the aneurysm. So, so after this, how many believe that you can do stenting or coiling? So animation is very beautiful, right? And you think that it is very simple? No? Yeah. So the main thing is, uh, here we are operating inside the brain from the leg. So that is one challenge. Second challenge is, these vessels are one millimeter to four millimeter in size. Okay? So it is very difficult because the arterial size is so small. So we require high-end fluoroscopy machine so that's where technology comes. We have now beautiful cath labs where we have, can have 3D angios, 3D roadmaps, and these procedure we can do successfully. And this image you should always remember. Why? Why I am talking about Ganesha here? See, we can transplant any organ in our body, vital organs, heart, kidney, liver. But till date, Lord Shiva is the only surgeon who has done successful head transplantation. Okay. On, on Ganesha. Okay. So it is important that we need to save our brain because we won't get another replacement. So the message I want you to take home today is stroke is a treatable and preventable condition. If you have any person or if you're having stroke, you need to rush him immediately to a stroke ready hospital don't waste time because every second counts. Thank you.